Hey, hi, hello. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to insert and edit MIDI inside of Reaper. This should be relatively quick, so let's get into it. Okay, so here I am in Reaper, no surprise, and I'm going to add a virtual instrument track, just like we learned in the last video. And the synth I'm going to use today is called Phase Plant. It's by a company named Kilohertz or Kilohertz. I'm not actually sure how you say it. One of my favorite synths, love it to death, but you can use literally any virtual instrument for this. So I'm going to open this up. And first thing I'm going to do is just load up a preset, keep things nice and simple. And because I added this as a virtual instrument, it's already talking to my MIDI keyboard, record enable and input monitoring are already on. So when I start playing some keys, great, we got sound. Fantastic. So one thing I want you to keep in mind when it comes to recording MIDI is that you can record MIDI onto literally any track. Any track is any track. A track can have MIDI, it can have audio, or it can have both at the exact same time, as I'll show you near the end of this video. So I'm just going to hit record. My shortcut for that is star or asterisk, but you can open up your actions menu, type in record, go down to where it says num uh, transport record, and I have that as numpad asterisk right there, and that should be what you're looking for. So go back to the beginning hit record and we see that we're recording a MIDI region right now and I'm just going to play randomly. Great. So we got a little MIDI thing in there. When I hit stop or hit pause, it's going to ask if I want to save that MIDI region. Yes, I do. Hit save. And now I'm going to close out of this synthesizer window we have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this MIDI item that just got made. And here we are. We're here in the MIDI editor. Now, this isn't very different from pretty much any other DAW that exists. This is pretty similar to all of them, more or less. But I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here, scroll back, and you can see we have our various notes. And if I want to select multiple of these, I can hold down right click to click and drag. It's not left click like most other DAWs. You hold down right click, click and drag. You see here at the bottom, I have my velocities. And if you're not seeing the velocities, you can go here to the bottom left. You can choose which MIDI information you want to see. But I'll start with velocity right now. And if I click and drag with the right mouse button multiple of these. I can change the velocity of multiple of them, and you'll see that the color changes as well as the velocity goes up and down. And that's changed down here where it says color velocity. So the color will change depending on the velocity, but you can also change it based on the pitch or the source or the track or anything like that. I keep it as velocity, keeps things simple, keeps things easy. But let's say I want to change the velocity of these. Great, make it quieter. Or I can also change the velocity by hovering over any one of these notes. And you can see if I kind of pixel hunt a little bit, my cursor turns into this kind of up down drag arrow. And when I get that, it means I can actually click and drag. And you can see that the velocity of the selected notes, which is all of them right now, is changing as I click and drag up and down. So nice to have. It's a little finicky. You do have to hunt a little bit, but that's what that little line that's in each of these MIDI notes means is that's a representation of the velocity. So let's talk about penciling in MIDI notes. Now, typically in DAWs, you have to open up a pencil tool or something like that, but Reaper just has that by default. So you can see that my cursor is a pencil tool already. And if I just click, nothing happens. But if I double click, a note appears, but I can also click and drag and that'll let me determine the length of that note. And if I drag up and down, you'll see that the note changes in pitch. So very easy, very straightforward, nothing crazy. And if I want to change the kind of grid that we're on right now, we're on eighth note triplets, but I can go down here to the bottom window here and change the grid so I can, for example, change it to quarter note, straight quarter notes, just down there. And now when I double click, it'll just make quarter notes. So whenever I double click to make a note, it'll make it at the value that's set at the grid at the bottom. And I can just click all over the place and have that all be set up and good to go. But if I want the note value to actually change based on, or be static based on the selection that I make, I can go down to this note section here 
For example, maybe I can click eighth note. And when I double click, it'll now make eighth notes wherever it is I click. But I prefer to keep it to the grid. So now whenever I double click, because the grid is set to quarter notes, it'll make quarter notes. Now, one thing I want to mention is that you can actually change the way you're seeing these notes a little bit. Now, typically, this is how it usually looks, is these blocks that change depending on the length of the note. So that note is that long. But you can also change it to little playheads and diamonds up here at the top. So if you go near the top left, you'll see a little MIDI icon with a play arrow and a MIDI icon with a diamond shape. So if I click one of these, you'll see that these notes, instead of the length, we're actually just seeing diamonds kind of representing each one. And you might wonder, why would you ever do that? It's really because of drums, because a lot of drum samples, it doesn't matter how long you're playing the note, it just matters that it was on and what the velocity is. Now, that doesn't really apply for things like rolls or any sort of sustained thing, but most drum samples are just hits. You don't have to worry about the note length so much. So this can clean things up if you're editing in a lot of drums. So that's why that exists. But 99% of the time, I prefer to click on this blocks view here. So we've already covered a fair amount here, but we need to have a triumphant return of a particular segment, which we didn't have in the last video. And that's Tea Time with Thane. Okay, so here we are back in Reaper. And something that I want to show you is quantizing, which is dead simple and very, very straightforward, something that every DAW has basically in the whole world. But if I want to quantize these notes to whatever grid, I can select them. I can hit Command A to select the ones that I want to quantize. And I can go up here to the top left where it says this kind of Q-ish icon, and that's the quantize button. But the default action that this is set to is Q. So I'm going to just press Q. And there we go. We have a quantize menu appear. And I'm going to move this over here just to make things easier. But you can choose what your quantize options are going to be. So by default, it'll probably choose something that maybe you don't really want, but you can change it to be whatever you want. You can be 164th notes or eighth notes. And you can see these are shifting around based on the changes I'm making here. I can also change the strength of that quantization. So how much it is quantizing it based on the grid that I set up. Or you can change the setting up here from manual to grid, meaning it'll always use whatever we have set to the grid, which is straight quarter notes. And it's all the standard options that you would typically want from a quantize section. So you can feel free to use this however you want. And then once you think that this sounds good, this looks good, you can hit OK or commit. So if you hit commit, it means that that is now what you just quantize things to, but you can also just hit OK and that'll kind of commit the quantize that you just made. Otherwise, it's completely non-destructive, but I can also hit undo and that'll unquantize it and I can hit shift command Z to requantize it. But dead simple, nothing crazy there. Now, yes, we do have our velocities down here, but maybe we want to take a look at some other MIDI sort of information. So maybe you want to look at the sustain pedal or expression or anything like that, where we want to change that value over time. So if I go over to the bottom left here, where it says velocity for me, at least, I can click that. I can choose any other MIDI CC that I want to start changing. So for example, let's say I want to change the sustain pedal, which is also called hold pedal, and that's CC64. I can click that, and you can see I have a section here now where I can kind of click and draw my hold pedal or sustain pedal on and off. Now you'll notice that the default pencil has a lot of granularity to it, which isn't a bad thing, that's usually a good thing. But for something that is the sustain pedal, which is usually just on and off, that can be a little bit annoying because if anything is not quite at the top, it means that the sustain pedal isn't on. And if anything isn't quite at the bottom, it means the sustain pedal isn't off, so we don't want to run into that situation. So if you just want to work in kind of straight blocks, you can just hold shift and click. And as I hold shift, you'll notice that it's just making straight blocks. So let me actually delete all of this because it's kind of making things a little wonky. So let me delete all of this information here. So I'm just right clicking and dragging and highlighting it all and then hitting delete. Now if I hold shift, 
you'll notice that it makes a nice block while I'm holding shift and left clicking and dragging. So it makes a nice little block that's way easier to manage. So I know the sustain pedal is on and now I can make sure while I'm holding shift still that the sustain pedal is off and makes it a little bit easier to draw things in. Now there are plenty of ways to draw different things in and edit and all that sort of stuff. A lot of people use this for MIDI mockups or anything like that, tons and tons and tons of different ways to edit MIDI. And if you're curious about more advanced ways, let me know, but this is plenty to get started when it comes to working in games. Now, one last thing I want to show you, just because I hinted at it at the start of this video, is that you can actually put MIDI and audio on the same track. It's a little messy if you do that, and I generally don't, but I just want to show you that Reaper's tracks are super, super, super versatile and can do both MIDI and audio and even at the same time. So I'm going to open up my Media Explorer here at the bottom, and I'm just going to click a random sound. Throw it up there. Great. We have that crazy alien sound and I'll zoom in and just kind of turn this down, drag it back. And you can see we have MIDI and audio next to each other. So now if I wanted, I could actually play these back and that's probably going to sound really terrible. This MIDI here. What a hot beat. And you can hear it's sustaining because we had that sustain pedal still going. So when I hit stop, it stops, but the sustain pedal was held still based on the information, so it was still kind of holding. Generally, I don't mix MIDI and audio on the same track. You might not want to as well, just to keep things nice and clean, but you can if you want to. Reaper gives you that capability. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, hit like, comment, subscribe, all the standard YouTube stuff that everybody tells you to do with good reason, because it does help. And if you do want to work in game audio full time, whether it be AAA or indie freelance, or you're still trying to figure that out, you're still wondering where you actually want to be in the game audio world as a composer, sound designer, anything else, implementation expert, literally anything, so then sign up for my newsletter. That's where I set up and give you all of my best information on how to work in the game industry, both from a business and a technical and a creative point of view, as well as mindset. We cover a lot on how to have a creative mindset and keep creating regardless of all the stuff that we all have to deal with day to day when it comes to being a full-time artist. So if you want that and you want two free courses that teach you how to work in the game industry, then sign up for my newsletter and I'll see you next time.